perfectly coated peppermint patty. Mmm. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today we're gonna to make some delicious peppermint patties from scratch. It is super easy to do, only requires a few ingredients, and you can whip it up in no time at all and then get them dipped and chilled and ready to either give as gifts or to store in the freezer until you want a little snack. Now, this is the second time I'm filming this video, and so something interesting happened. I used a different brand of sweetened condensed milk, and I ended up with a yellow beige filling for the peppermint patties. Well, you know, peppermint patties are a solid, you know, a bright white inside, so this was not gonna work, and I couldn't figure out why it was happening. In my test batches, that wasn't the case. It was very light and white, like it should be. So I told Jeff to go grab some other cans of sweetened condensed milk. I happen to have three different brands out there, and, um, I used this brand, which is the Members Mark Sam's Club brand this time, and it is so much darker. I couldn't believe it. So we opened up uh, the one that I usually use, which is Eagle brand, and opened up the Nestle brand, and I could really see the difference. So I don't usually say get a certain brand of anything, you know, but for this recipe, I'm gonna suggest that you try to find the Nestle brand. If you can't find the Nestle brand, then definitely go with Eagle brand. Those are gonna be your best bet for this recipe. This was just too dark and it's gonna make your filling beige in color. Okay, so I just wanna get that out of the way. The next thing I wanna get out of the way is that this recipe makes a lot of peppermint patties, a lot of them. You don't have to make the whole batch. You can cut them in half or even in a quarter. It's no problem. Just cut back on all your ingredients. The reason why I decided to make a large batch is because I wasn't sure what I would do with the other half of the sweetened condensed milk can. So that's why I'm making a pretty large batch. But again, you don't have to. This is about one and a quarter cups of sweetened condensed milk. So you can base your measurements uh, on that. And I'll go over more of that, uh, more of those details in my written recipe on my website. All right, so to make the centers for the peppermint patties is super, super easy. You only need a few ingredients. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna add is one can, which is 14 ounces of sweetened condensed milk to my stand mixer. You do not have to have a stand mixer to make this. You can use a hand mixer or you can even just mix it up by hand. It'll be fine. A little tougher to do. You need a little elbow grease, but you can do it by hand for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in to the bowl here. All right, that looks good. Now we're gonna add in four tablespoons of room temperature butter. It can be salted or unsalted. I'm using salted, but that's just because that's what I have here. So we're gonna add that into the stand mixer. Then we need to add in our peppermint flavoring. And what I like to use is a bakery emulsion. So it is not the extract kind, but a bakery emulsion. I get it on Amazon. I will definitely link to it below in the video description for you. They come in all different flavors. They're fantastic to use. I use them all the time. You're gonna use somewhere between one and three teaspoons of this, and that will depend on how much peppermint flavor you want in your peppermint patties. So I start out with two teaspoons and then add some more if needed. Okay, there we go. And then the last ingredient, before of course the chocolate, gotta dip them in chocolate, but the last ingredient to make the filling is powdered sugar. I start with seven cups of powdered sugar, but I add it in in increments. So I'll start off with adding in about three cups and then add an additional half to one cup 
as needed until I get to the desired consistency. I've tested this recipe several times. If the humidity level's higher in my house, I've needed more of the powdered sugar. If it's not, I need less. So it's really not something that you can just dump in seven cups. You might end up with a very crumbly mix that won't work very well, and then you'll have to add in liquid and kind of chase it. So instead of doing that, add it in slowly, but you can certainly start off with three cups right off the bat. And I don't sift it. You certainly, you certainly could. It would incorporate a little bit quicker. So if you're doing it by hand, I might suggest uh, sifting it before you put it in because it's just gonna be easier, easier on you. All right, so now I'm gonna put this down and lock it into place and start off on low because if you, if you just ramped it up, you're gonna end up with a shower of powdered sugar. All right, so mixed in the first part. Now it looks beautiful, but it is not there yet. So it is still way too runny. So we're just gonna go ahead and add in another cup or two. And I'm adding in a cup or two because I can tell by the consistency it's gonna need that much. But if you're making it for the first time, really start out, like I said, with a half of a cup or so. All right that mixed up again. All right, it's looking better. It's a little stiffer, but not nearly what we need it to be in order to form our peppermint patties and have them uh, have them set up nicely and dip nicely. So what I'm gonna do real quick though is I'm gonna remove the bowl scrape this off so we don't have a mess and just get down into the very bottom to kind of pull in any of that powdered sugar that's on the very very bottom so it incorporates in so I'm just gonna remove it and kind of scrape down there and turn it over a little bit because there's some there's some little crumbles down there that aren't getting incorporated all right that looks good so now we can just keep adding a little bit more of the powdered sugar, and I will definitely show you the consistency that it needs to get to, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put in another two thirds of a cup. All right, let's check it now and see. I think it's still a little too wet. So when you feel it, if it feels really like sticky and tacky, it's still too wet and you need to add more of the powdered sugar. I may end up using all of this today, which is a full seven cups. All right, that's starting to feel a lot less sticky. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bowl again and just scrape it down really well. Whoops. And I think that we will add in the rest of this powdered sugar and then we should be good to go. And I will give it a taste because you can add in a little bit more of the flavoring if you want. In fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. That's pretty good. I think I will add another teaspoon though. I just like mine really, really strong peppermint flavor. So we're gonna add in another teaspoon. And let's move this bowl all the way off so I can really get down in here. And we're gonna make sure you stir it around really well from the bottom because let me show you what I'm finding on the bottom is some of this unincorporated powdered sugar, okay? 
All right, so scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl really well. This actually feels pretty good. I'm gonna, let me just see, do we need any more? Or do I just need to mix this up better? I'm gonna mix it one more time before I add in the rest of the powdered sugar because again, you don't want it to be too dry. All right, so go ahead and test it. If it is really sticky and tacky, it's not ready yet. This feels, pr oh, <laughs> this feels pretty good, so. We're good to go here. It's nice and smooth. So it's like a fondant or even even a little bit of a Play-Doh, but it's not, not too, too sticky. All right, that looks good. So I ended up with like a half of a cup left over. And, um, you know, I could even probably put that in and it would have been fine, but I'm not gonna, not gonna worry about it. All right, so let me go ahead and clean this up. Oh, real quick, let me go ahead and show you the difference here because you might be able to see it better now. It really, there really is a difference. I hope the camera can pick it up. So these are gonna look nice and white inside of your chocolate, and this would just look beige, which is fine. I mean, so if you can't find it, it's just gonna be a different color. It's still gonna taste good and everything like that. Or you could even put a little bit of food coloring in there if you wanted, and you could make the center a different color. That would be perfectly fine. All right, let me clean this up, and then I'm, we're gonna get this into a plastic bag or a container, and we're gonna get it into the refrigerator just to chill for a few minutes. Then we're gonna make up our peppermint patties and get to dipping them in some delicious chocolate. All right, so leave your peppermint patty filling, I don't even know what to call it, in the refrigerator just to set up for 10, 15 minutes, or as long as it's well wrapped, you can leave it in the refrigerator for you know days and it'll be just fine. Then I put it into a bowl and I'm gonna start making up the peppermint patties. So what I like to use is the small scoop from Pampered Chef, just because it's the perfect size for a small peppermint patty, but you could use you know, a teaspoon, a couple teaspoons, whatever you want. Just make a little ball. And this is probably about two and a half teaspoons, I would say. So just make a little ball, just like that, and put them down on your sheet. Now you can do one at a time here, which I will do just to show you. But usually I make the whole thing and then just go and punch them all down. So then I use a tart shaper, but you can use anything that's got a flat end to it. Put another piece of parchment on top and go, just press it down. The thickness is important here. And the reason being is that if they're too thin, they end up flopping and sort of melting in the chocolate. So we wanna have them about a quarter to a half of an inch thick, okay? That's gonna be a good size, and when we freeze them, because you have to put them in the freezer before we dip them, um, it will hold up really nicely in the chocolate. All right, so I'm just gonna make a small tray here to start. Like I said, this makes a ton of peppermint patties. <laughs> So there we go. If you have any that are kind of cracking, a little bit like this one on the edge, just try to smooth it a little bit before you put it in the freezer. Again, that's just so the chocolate really gets on there nice and smooth. All right, so I'm gonna pop these into the freezer and then we're gonna get our chocolate melted and make up the rest of the trays and finish up the peppermint patties. All right, so let's make our chocolate for dipping the candy in. And what I'm gonna use is the Ninja Foodi because it makes a fantastic double boiler. And I have um, a double boiler, that's what this is called, in the pot. And I have two cups of water in there that's gonna create the steam to melt the chocolate gently. 
If you don't have a double boiler or something that will fit in the pot like this, use the rack and you can use a bowl and that's fine. And then um, I usually will seal around the edges a little bit with some foil just to keep it from all leaking out. And then you can still use the Ninja Foodi to melt the chocolate. We're gonna use the sear saute. High is what we want for now. I will decrease that, but right now we wanna get that water boiling. When you're adding water to your pot, it doesn't matter how much or how little you add, uh, but you might have to add more if it uh, dissipates, you know, because it's going to evaporate into steam. But what you do want to make sure is that the bottom of your pot or bowl is not in the water. That is going to create too high of a heat and it's going to uh, over temp your chocolate, which will lead to it seizing up and it will be a crumbly mess and impossible to work with. So make sure that you're a good inch or two above the water line. So the you know, however deep your bowl is that you're using, you just need to adjust your water for that. But for this one, it's two cups of water, high sear saute, start letting it get uh, hot in there and producing some steam. Now, let me talk about the chocolate that I'm using because the best way to make dipping chocolate for candy is to use a real chocolate bar, a good quality chocolate bar, but you would need a lot of them to dip a lot of candy and it can get pretty expensive. Um, and then you temper those candy bars. So you melt the chocolate, then you add some cooler chocolate to it and that tempers it and you get a nice shiny covering on your whatever candy you're dipping in chocolate but I don't wanna to go to all that trouble. So I wanna use chocolate chips, but I am using a higher end chocolate chip. This is a, a dark chocolate from Ghirardelli, and I'm using some melting chocolates. The melting chocolates are also from Ghirardelli, and I really recommend spending the extra money because it's gonna give you the best flavor. The reason why I use both is because these are obviously meant for dipping chocolate in. However, if you've ever tasted one by itself, they're not very good. And so I really want that nice dark chocolate flavor when I dip my candy. So I'm gonna use uh, some chocolate chips. It just helps to boost the flavor, if you ask me. If you wanna use all melting chocolates, perfectly fine. You can also use semi-sweet, you can use milk chocolate. You know, you don't have to use dark chocolate to dip any of your candies in. You can use what chocolate you like to use. But this is what I'm gonna do, and it's eight ounces of each, which is about a cup and a quarter of each type of chocolate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these in. Then we have to wait for them to start to melt, which doesn't really take that long, and we'll stir them up. Meantime, I'm gonna show you what happens. Like, let's say you just have a bag of uh, dark chocolate or a bag of, um, you know, semi-sweet and you wanna use that for dipping. It will work, okay? It will set up. I dip this candy in all dark Ghirardelli chocolate chips, okay? Now, if you look at it from this side, it's beautiful. But you can see, oh, you can see these streaks on this side. That's what happens, okay? It's not real shiny. It's not horrible, but you get these little streaks, okay, from using just regular chocolate chips. So I do recommend using the combination. It seemed to work much better um, when I was dipping other candy in there. All right, so we just let this go ahead and uh, melt up a little bit. I'll stir it a few times, and we will leave the candy in the freezer until we're just about ready to dip it because you don't want it to warm back up. All right, so once the chocolate, well, once the water starts to really steam, and you can see my overhead camera's all steamed up, you can go ahead and turn your heat down, and I usually turn it down to low medium for now, and finish melting the chocolate. I've already stirred it once, which you're not gonna be able to see right now because we're all steamed up, but that's okay. Here, I'll take it out and show you. So you can see it's starting to melt, but it's got a little ways to go. We wanna do this gently too. We don't wanna, we don't wanna overheat. We don't wanna melt um, too fast or anything. We wanna do this gently. The other thing I'll say is be very careful when you're stirring this. You don't wanna make sure that you are away from the steam, okay? So pull your bowl back so you're not over top of the steam because the steam can really burn you and steam burns are extremely painful. So make sure either wear heat protective gloves or just be very careful by pulling your bowl towards you before you start to stir the chocolate. All right, it's gonna take probably about five minutes or so for that to finish up.
The other thing I should mention about the uh, the amount of chocolate and melting chips that I put in is that's going to depend on how uh, big your bowl is in diameter. You want to have a good level of chocolate. So if you have a wider bowl, you're going to need a little bit more chocolate than I used. So try to find something that has a uh, a bowl that is about maybe six inches in diameter, that's gonna work the best for you for dipping the candy. All right, so everything's looking really good now. Almost all the chocolate has melted. It's nice consistency. Still have a few little pieces that need to melt, but that's fine. I'm just gonna stir it a little bit here. Now, I like the consistency of this. I think it's perfect. But if yours was a little thicker and not so runny, you can add a little bit of coconut oil. So start out with just like a half of a tablespoon. I don't really need it, but I'm gonna add it in anyway, just to show you guys, and melt that in with it. Now, if you add too much, you will get a little slight coconut flavor. But anyway, that's just an option. And it really does give you even more of a nice dipping chocolate, okay? so. Half a tablespoon is definitely all I need. And the reason why it's important that you have your chocolate to the right consistency is because you want it to coat your candy, but then drip off the excess. And it just makes it a lot easier and faster when you go to dip the candy. All right, this looks perfect. Now I'm gonna turn down to the low temperature. Now let's grab our peppermint patties out of the freezer and start dipping them. All right, so make sure that you leave your peppermint patties in the freezer for at least 30 minutes. If they're too soft, they're going to melt kind of in the chocolate. It's going to be really difficult to dip them. So you want them nice and cold. Now the chocolate's ready. I've got a pan here prepared with a little bit of parchment and a fork and a butter knife. And that's all I'm going to use to dip them. Now, do one tray at a time, leave the other trays in the freezer until you're ready for them, because like I said, you need them to be really cold. So I just put a little bit of chocolate over top, go up and down a little bit here to get off all that excess. Now, if it pulls underneath, don't worry about that at all, okay, because it, it will come off very easily once they're chilled. Oops, wrong tray. Now I'm just gonna slide this off with a knife here, just real nice and easy. All right, there we go, that looks good. So I'm gonna do these very quickly because they warm up very fast. So this recipe made 62 peppermint patties. So like I said, you could cut it in half if you wanted to. Um, so I am just, I'm not even using the knife anymore. These are so nicely frozen uh, from my chest freezer that they're just, they're working out perfectly. The ones that I put in my um, inside, my home, the, that freezer right back there, they were a little bit softer and a little bit more difficult to get off the fork. So the, if you can leave them in the freezer longer, it will be much easier to dip them because the chocolate just starts to set up immediately. All right. So when you get one tray done, which this is my second tray, but when you get one tray done, you're going to pop that in the refrigerator or the freezer for just a few minutes, just to let it set up completely. And, and I'm going to rotate and get the other tray out. And we're going to do that until we're all done with 62 of them. All right, so I finished dipping all of them. I did have to add in some more chocolate. I added in another cup of melting wafers and another cup of the dark chocolate chips. And then I was able to finish all of them up. So we've got all of them done, some back there too. And now I just took this batch out of the freezer. So I just wanted to show you that to clean up the edges, just simply press it around and they will come right off. This one's been sitting out for a a minute right out of the freezer is the best because they will just snap off but you can easily clean up the edges that way or you could take a little knife if you wanted to and just kind of clean up everything either way 
Now, I left these out because I wanted to show you I did not refrigerate or freeze these after I dipped them. That was one of my little oopsies. You know, it happens. Um, so they're a little bit harder to get off of the parchment. They're still like a little tacky. So you can let them set up on the counter. That's no problem, but leave them alone for several hours. But I just like to pop them in the freezer or even the refrigerator and then clean them up. And then I let them sit out before I wrap them up. So I'm just gonna clean these up real quick and we're gonna get to tasting. All right, that looks good. So ordinarily, I would just leave those alone for a while. And then I like to store them in the freezer. That's how I keep them. And then every time I want one, I just grab one right out of the freezer. You don't even have to let it thaw. They are absolutely perfect. They're delicious. All right, here it goes. So perfectly coated peppermint patty. Mmm. These are amazing. Mmm. Oh my goodness. I think they're better than the um, York peppermint patties, honestly. Mmm, phenomenal. They melt in your mouth. Absolutely perfect. Super easy to make, super fun to make. Great activity to do with the kids. And then you can package them up and give them as gifts. They're absolutely perfect.